everybody, it's Julie. Welcome back to Rowan Co. Farms. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're new here, uh, welcome to our channel. We do two new videos every single week um, about homesteading, farming, gardening, cooking, and the whole homestead lifestyle. So please join us if you are interested in that type of video. Like and subscribe down below. But let's get going on today's video. Um, if you guys have been following along, you know that we are participating in the Three Rivers Challenge. Uh, which means we are not going to the grocery store for the months of January and February. So we're gonna be cooking from our pantry strictly. So I'm gonna start today with our traditional New Year's Day dinner, which is black eyed peas, cornbread, and collard greens. And then we usually make a pork along with that, but since I don't eat pork anymore, we're gonna be making a meatloaf out of duck and chicken. So come along with us today as we start our New Year off right with our traditional greens, cornbread, and black-eyed peas. Come along and join us today. So the ingredients that I have, I soaked my black-eyed peas overnight. Um, I just soaked them in water just so that they reabsorb and are ready to be cooked. This just lessens your cooking time. Um, I do a traditional stovetop cook. A lot of people like to do Instant Pot, and if you do the Instant Pot, you don't necessarily have to soak them, but I like to soak them and cook them in a traditional way. Um, next up, I have a massive bag of collard greens from my neighbor. Uh, they are wonderful farmers. They farm tomatoes and collard greens every year, and they have a field full of these greens and they let me come and just pick a bag full which is a massive amount to me but to them it's very little and they gave these to us um, as a little um, New Year's um, generosity I guess so we're gonna cook these up today um, as well as making a meatloaf um, from some duck and chicken that we're gonna season up and then we'll pop that into the oven and then the last thing we'll do is make a cornbread and that's pretty simple, but I'll show you. We'll do like a nice skillet cornbread, and it is gluten-free because I'm gonna be using a gluten-free flour. So we need to start off by getting our greens prepared. Um, what I like to do, these are really big leaves, but for me, collard greens, I don't really care for the stem. It's really thick and hard, and I generally will just remove the stem. Um, so some people, you can just strip strip most of this off and then you're left with a, just a portion. There we go. Tear it off here. And I just I just get rid of these stems or give them to the chickens. Um, I don't like this part. <laughs> so we'll go through here, we'll get rid of all the stems, tear them off, and then I'll chop these up roughly. Um, however you like to chop your greens is fine, but chop them up, wash them really well, and then we'll get started on the cooking process. I use a little bacon, duck bacon, um, and I use chicken broth to cook my greens in, and I think it makes a huge difference in the flavor um, in the end. So bacon and chicken broth, secret ingredients, uh, so you gotta have that. So I'm just pulling all of the leaves off of the stems, and then now I have a big, huge pile of all the leaves, and I'm just gonna start chopping them up really roughly, uh, just so they're not really massive pieces. Once you have everything chopped up, just make sure you wash your leaves really, really well so that they're clean and ready for cooking. So here we've started rendering out our bacon. So we're also gonna add in some chopped garlic. And I like a little spice in mine, so I'm gonna be adding a little crushed red pepper to the pot too. And I'm gonna saute that in to our oil and onions. So to our mixture, I'm gonna add just a little bit of chicken broth to the bottom of the pan. just to provide a little bit of steam for the greens as we start to add those in. I just add a little bit at a time to give them a chance to wilt down and then we add more. And we'll just continue to do that until we get all of the greens into the pot. So 
So the last little bit that I'm gonna add to our pot here is some salt. Collard greens are pretty bland unless you add flavor. So the other thing I'm gonna add is cowboy candy marinade. So this is just a little bit of the juice left from like a canning recipe that I do um, with jalapenos. And so this is like a spicy, sweet, uh, vinegary kind of sauce. And so I'm just gonna add that in here. Um, not a lot, just a little splash, just to add a little flavor, a little spice, a little kick. I'm gonna put a little bit more chicken broth in here too, and then we're gonna let these cook for at least two hours. Collard greens are real thick and tough, and so they just, they need time and steam <laughs> to really get them tender. But once you do, they're really delicious. So, there we go. We're gonna let these go, like I said, at least two hours, and then we'll do a little taste test and see if they're nice and tender for us. All right, next up, let's work on our black-eyed peas. Uh, like I said earlier, I have soaked these overnight. Um, at least eight hours is the best I can recommend, um, just in some water to get these nice and plump and not dry anymore. Um, and then I'm going to just put a little fat oil, whatever oil you use in your pan, and saute off an onion in here. That's just gonna give us our nice base flavor. Um, you can add a garlic clove as well if you like to that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of chicken fat because that's what I have. And that, that comes from making bone broth. This is the fat that kind of was um, rose to the top after I made the bone broth and I scoop it off and put it in a jar and I use that as my cooking fat throughout the week. So right now it's gonna serve as my cooking fat for my onions. So let's add a little bit of roughly chopped garlic to that. And then once I get a little saute going and I start to smell that garlic and onion really good, I'm gonna again add a little bit of crushed red pepper because I like mine a little spicy. If you don't like spicy, you can leave that part out or just use very little. directly into the pot while it's still sauteing. I'm gonna add in my black eyed peas and a touch more oil. And we're just gonna kinda give these peas a chance to kinda saute in that onion and garlic flavor just a little bit. I'm gonna add salt and pepper to this. I'd say about a teaspoon of each. I'm not a big measurer, but I, I use my fingers and I think a pinch for me is about a half a teaspoon. And we're gonna be using chicken broth in here as well as our, our cooking medium. You'll need at least uh, two cups or so of chicken broth. Again, to me, the key to these two things is chicken broth. Um, that makes the difference in just soaking in water versus soaking in something that has a lot of flavor. And just, you know, your, your beans especially are absorbing liquid. So if you're gonna have them absorb a liquid, let it be something that's gonna impart more flavor into them. So I've got a couple cups of liquid in here. We'll keep an eye on it while it's cooking to make sure that 
there's still plenty of cooking liquid in there so it doesn't burn. So we're gonna put this on a simmer and let this cook for another hour and a half to two hours to let those beans get nice and tender. So all these scraps from the collard greens are going out to my chickens. The scraps from my onion peels back there will go into a freezer bag and be saved for the next time that I make broth. All onion skins, celery pieces, carrot pieces, anything that I chop off uh, when I'm making some other thing gets thrown into a freezer bag and then I use that later when I make stock. That way nothing goes to waste. Um, instead of cutting up a brand new carrot to put into my chicken stock, I just take all those little end pieces, butt pieces, whatever you wanna call them, and I toss them into the stock, let them cook out, and that way those pieces don't go to waste. So let's make our cornbread. Uh, for me, cornbread is a great treat because I am gluten-free and cornbread is one of the easier breads to make that don't require a huge rise like a normal bread would. So I can enjoy cornbread and it still tastes just like normal cornbread versus trying to make a gluten-free sandwich bread. It doesn't turn out in the same way. So I really do enjoy uh, cornbread. So I'm gonna be using a gluten-free flour but you can use a regular flour as well, um, normal all-purpose flour. This recipe works the same either way. Um, and then also some cornmeal, a half a stick, and I'm sorry, a whole stick of butter, which is a half a cup. Uh, that'll be melted in just a second. We need a little bit of sugar, some baking soda, salt, a couple eggs, and buttermilk. Uh, now I have buttermilk powder that I reconstituted. Um, that's what this is right here. Um, if you don't have buttermilk, you can use regular milk. So one cup of milk to one tablespoon of vinegar. Let that sit for about five minutes and that'll give you the consistency and the acidity in that milk that you need to mimic buttermilk. Um, so that's a trick you can always do. Regular milk with a little bit of vinegar in it. Because um, the main purpose of the buttermilk is to add acidity to the mix, which helps with the rise of what you're trying to do. So I have buttermilk powder, so that's gonna serve the same purpose, um, but let's get started mixing everything together and making our mix. The other thing that you need to know about making cornbread is that we're going to be using a 10 inch skillet that is already in the oven being preheated. If you want a nice crust on your cornbread, you have to preheat the skillet as hot as you can get it. That way when you pour your batter into the pan, you start to get that sizzle right away and it starts to kind of sear off the dough or the batter at the bottom of the pan, which makes a beautiful caramelized crust when you flip it out later. So that's the trick. Go ahead and heat up your cast iron skillet now. So we have a half a cup of melted butter and we're gonna add to that a half a cup of sugar. Uh, this is just raw sugar, but regular white sugar is fine too. We're going to stir that together until everything is really, really creamy and incorporated together. Next, I'm gonna be cracking in two eggs. I'm gonna do it one at a time and just incorporate those into the batter individually. We're gonna to add to this a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of salt, as well as the cup of buttermilk that we prepared. Next, we're gonna add in one cup of cornmeal and one cup of all-purpose flour. I'm using gluten-free, but you can use any type that you like. Mix everything together until you get a nice, thick consistency, and then just let it rest for about five minutes while we prepare our skillet from the oven. So add about two to three tablespoons of butter to your hot skillet. Uh, make sure it's coating the entire pan, and then you can add your batter into the skillet where it's really, really hot. We're gonna bake this at about 375 to 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. let's start on our meatloaf. Um, I'm using two pounds of ground meat. You can use any ground meat that you choose. 
Uh, I'm using a combination of chicken and duck uh, because I cannot eat mammal meat. So no beef, no pork, no lamb, no deer, nothing that is a mammal. So uh, that is the reason why I have chosen these two ground meats. But again, you can use any kind you want and I season my meatloaf the same pretty much no matter what kind of meat goes into it. So uh, let's get started with that. Um, I'm going to, and this is only if you don't have beef um, or pork that you're gonna be using in your seasonings. Um, I use this vegan beef broth base. This kind of gives a little bit of that meaty, beefy flavor. Um, you can also get that by adding a little Worcestershire sauce, but I don't have that right now. So I'm going to just be adding about a tablespoon of this uh, mixture in here, just to give a little bit of that meaty flavor that I like. There we go. Now we're also going to be adding garlic powder, onion powder, uh, paprika, oregano, and I'd say at least a teaspoon of each of those. I don't really measure a lot. I'm kind of a eyeball it kind of person, but you can definitely um, get away with at least a teaspoon of each, and then you can gauge it from there. Um, I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of tomato paste, uh, salt and pepper, and a few eggs and some breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs just help kind of stretch it just a little bit. Salt, pepper, and then we're going to just mix this by hand. I'm gonna use a little bit of crushed red pepper, but not much because my collard greens are actually really spicy. I spiced them a little too much, so I don't wanna have everything be too spicy now. Um, let's go ahead and put a couple of eggs in. I think two will be plenty. And that's just to help bind it together a little bit. But you don't want it to be so bound that it's like cakeish and heavy. You want it to still be a little bit loose, but you want the meat to hold together. So let's add tomato paste, say a few tablespoons of that, and then I'm going to add, uh, I'd say about a cup of breadcrumbs. You can use breadcrumbs, you can use cracker crumbs, um, I'm using gluten-free breadcrumbs. Now we're gonna get in there with our hands and we're just gonna mix it all up as best we can to get everything incorporated together. So we're just gonna fill our loaf pan up with the meat mixture and then I'm gonna just smear a little bit of the leftover tomato paste on top of the meat and then we'll get it into the oven and start cooking. So we took our cornbread out and it looks amazing. The crust that we have on it from putting that butter into the hot pan and then adding our batter has created this beautiful cornbread. Just take a look at it. So it's time to pull it all together. Let's get the meatloaf out of the oven and get everything put onto the plate. I can't wait to enjoy this meal.
day one of our pantry challenge was a success. This meal turned out amazing. It was really delicious. I'd love for you guys to follow along as we continue the pantry challenge throughout January and February. Join us for the Three Rivers Challenge here at Rowan Co. Farms. You can find the links to all the recipes we made today at our website, and I'm going to link that down below. We'll see you next time here at Rowan Co. Farms. Thank you.